Hello, and welcome to this presentation on the desert's endurable tree, the wonderful mesquite. My name is Mary, and I'm the education coordinator here at the Mojave Desert Land Trust. This presentation is part of NDLT's new Desert Indoor series. We created this new series of presentations and student learning modules with the stay at home orders in mind. Cindy Holland, our volunteer and outreach coordinator, recently gave an informative presentation on citizen science, and you can check out her video on our YouTube channel. Today we'll be covering a basic overview of the Mojave Desert, information on the desert's native mesquite trees, the cultural significance of mesquite uses by native peoples, its modern uses and nutritional information, then I'll share a chocolate chip cookie recipe utilizing mesquite powder. The Mojave Desert is a vast arid desert located mostly within the Southern California region. It was named after the Mojave peoples who live along the Colorado River. The topography consists of a basin and range system, meaning lower basins of open valleys and mountains. The boundary of the Mojave within California ranges from the Sierra Mountains to the west and southward to the San Bernardino Mountains. The Mojave extends eastward past the California state boundary into parts of southern Nevada, northern Arizona, and southwestern Utah. Vegetation is typified by the iconic Joshua trees, which grows in no other region of the world. There's also a variety of cactus, some well-adapted trees, and low shrubs. In the spring, the desert experiences a beautiful wildflower bloom. Some of these wildflowers include our state flower, the California poppy, which is prominent in the western portion of the desert. The Mojave is also host to a wide range of animal species who are well adapted to the desert living. The desert tortoise, bighorn sheep, bobcats, rattlesnake, and a whole host of other species call this desert home. Many of the animals are nocturnal, which is why people tend to think of the desert as uninhabited. Two species of mesquite are native to the Mojave, the honey mesquite and the scrooby mesquite. Let's talk about the honey mesquite first. This beautiful tree has deep tap roots, the longest being found within a mining tunnel located 160 feet below ground. Its long slender beans grow after the tree blooms in late spring. These pods are an important food source to many desert inhabitants, including a beetle whose larvae eat the young seeds. The scrooby mesquite grows similarly to the honey mesquite. It has deep tap roots, grows to a similar height, and has the same wide canopy that provides much needed shade in the desert. The seed pods grow in that easily recognized tight coil that are reminiscent of a screw's thread. For thousands of years, mesquite has been an important food source for the native tribes in the area. The Timbisha Shoshone, Kawiya, Chemwavy, and Mojave are just a few of the native peoples who relied on the trees. Though the pods were often collected and dried, being stored in large granary baskets like that pictured below, all parts of the trees were used to some degree. The flowers could be collected and roasted. The flowers were also used to make a tea. The trunks were turned into grinding mortars. The branches used for bow making, shelter construction, and cordage. Thorns could be used as needles. The sap was used as a glue to attach arrowheads to arrow shafts and to attach baskets to mortars. The leaves were also used as a medicine to help heal cuts and eye infections. Mesquite pods were collected while green and could be eaten that way or dried and stored for the winter. The entire pod would be crushed and ground into a flour that was then mixed with water and baked into a nutrient rich cake that could be eaten or dried and then eaten later. These dried cakes were easily transported, being a great source of food during movements of peoples during seasonal rounds and on hunting trips. Modern mesquite can be used as a flour or sugar substitute. The flour is low in calories, contains no fat, and is gluten-free. It also is a good source of fiber, potassium, iron, and niacin. It contains calcium, thiamine, riboflavin, and zinc, though in lower quantities. Mesquite powder is low on the glycemic index, high in iron, and can be used as an alternative to sugar cane. It also gives food a wonderful, rich, nutty flavor. 
I strongly encourage you not to collect any mesquite you find in the desert. It's an important food, nesting, and shelter resource for a variety of animals, including some of our protected species. You can find sustainably harvested organic mesquite through local health food stores or on Amazon. Side note, you can also support MDLT through Amazon Smile. I would like to encourage you to shop local and support your community businesses. Unfortunately, I was able to find it locally and ordered organic sustainably harvested mesquite through Amazon. Mesquite flour is made by using the entire pod and as a sugar substitute by using only the seeds. You'll be able to tell the two apart by the color. Flour looks much darker than the powder. Both the flour and powder provide that rich nutty flavor to your food. This photo shows the difference between cookies utilizing mesquite flour and mesquite powder. Links to both recipes can be found on our website or in the section below. The recipe we're going to talk about today utilizes mesquite powder. You'll notice that we gathered all of the ingredients before making the cookies. I must admit that we only did this for the demonstration because there were a lot of dishes that had to be cleaned after using this method, though it was quicker by measuring all the ingredients out first. The first thing you'll want to do is cream the sugar and butter together till they're well incorporated. Then mix in the other wet components, afterwards mixing the dry ingredients. This recipe calls for the use of raw sugar and dark honey, but if you only have regular sugar or light honey, use it. There's no need to spend the extra money. My family and I just found that the raw sugar added a nice crunch. You can also use the regular flour if you don't already have cake flour. Cashew flour worked well in balancing out the flavors with the other ingredients. I highly suggest you do not try coconut flour, just trust me, it was bad. Depending on the elevation of, the, of your home, you'll want to adjust baking times. See the recipe for some suggestions. Before rolling your cookie dough into small balls, spray your hands with some cooking spray. The dough is really sticky and will coat your hands otherwise. You can always use a scoop or a tablespoon to keep your hands clean. We're just a tactile bunch and eyeballed it. The ingredients listed here are what we found to make the best tasting cookies. And believe me, we've tried a bunch of cookies in the process of creating this recipe. Even though I have two cookie sheets, I did put them into the oven separately. That way the cookies could bake evenly. I would like to recognize MDLT's Director of Plant Conservation, Medina Aspel, for all her help and guidance during the research portion on our native mesquites. Her help was invaluable. Also thanks to Michael Mora and Cindy Holland, our outreach team. They really helped make this presentation come together. Lastly, I'd like to thank my husband, Nathan. He was a trooper in tasting all the different recipes, including the failed coconut batch. Plus, he did all the dishes. I adjusted this recipe over 10 times, so you can imagine how many dishes he did. When you make these cookies with your kids, remember to have fun, even when they sneak some of the chocolate chips. Thanks for watching this presentation. I had quite a lot of fun making the cookies and learning more about our wonderful mesquite. You can always email me with any questions or join me later at noon for a live Q&A Facebook event. If you have ideas or suggestions about future topics, go ahead and comment below. If you like this presentation and would like to be notified of future ones, hit the like and subscribe button. Thanks again and have fun making those mesquite cookies.